Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about the craziness going on in between the ACC and Florida State. They are currently battling out in the courts to see if Florida State can get out of their grant of rights deal. And now we're going to talk about a little bit of a coaching crisis going on in college football. But before we get into that, I do want to remind you that we get a ton of of different tips throughout the show. We get a ton of different questions and the best way to get your questions seen on screen and answer it as quickly as possible is to use the link down below streamelements.com slash gsmc sports network dot slash tip. It is a huge help not only to us but to you all to see what you uh, ask on the screen and I can get to it as quickly as possible. So uh, if you use that function uh, you can definitely get your question answered and possibly have, you know, uh, a fun little back and forth here. But let's jump back into what has been kind of an interesting little time in college football. A lot of uh, different problems popping up uh, around the sport. A lot of people um, not having a ton of optimism in terms of the future of this sport. And uh, there have been times where I've been among that group, and uh, I'm not necessarily going to help those uh, beliefs right now, but I will try to subside a little bit of worry towards the end of this segment. But let's jump right in, because we've had a ton of coaches uh, find their way either to the NFL or to the SEC and the Big Ten, leaving behind um, what seemed like bigger, uh, better jobs in a lot of ways, and... Um, We'll start with the guys going to the NFL. Obviously, we had Jeff Halfley leave Boston College to take over the defensive coordinator position at the Green Bay Packers. Um, Brian McClendon, uh, a really, really talented wide receiver coach at uh, Georgia, has left um, to join the Buccaneers. Also, Liam Cohen has joined the Buccaneers as their OC, leaving Kentucky, um, who uh, had in the past been the Rams OC, so not quite as surprising there, but still something to keep a track of. And then obviously Ryan Grubb taking the job uh, back up in Seattle after what was probably about five seconds living in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Um, but tons of guys uh, have been leaving for the NFL, and I think it's a very interesting uh, feeling when People are leaving to go to the NFL to have a better work-life balance. There have been a lot of guys um, that have been a little bit turned off in recent years uh, to just the amount of work that goes into being a college football coach. Um, now, obviously, they get paid pretty handsomely to do that work, but there's only so many hours in a day, and uh, more money does not more buy you more time, and there are times of the year where coaches are just up against it. Um, particularly December has been kind of the poster child for how kind of broken the schedule and the structure of college football has been over the last couple of years. Um, December is an absolute nightmare for coaches in a lot of ways. They have to recruit uh, high school kids. They have to recruit the transfer portal. They have to recruit their own kids, uh, which is something that um, not as many people talk about, but you have to keep your own kids in the building now. Um, there's no longer this ability to just show up to practice and know that all of your guys are going to be there because tons of stuff is happening behind the scenes with NIL and the transfer portal and um, some teams not you know adhering to certain rules that are in place with the transfer portal. So there's a lot of things that they have to do just in terms of roster management. And then you get into coaching. Uh, then you get into pre uh, preparing for a bowl game, uh, going through bowl practices, dealing with the media days for all of that stuff, uh, travel, all of these different things around bowl season that just put coaches in a really, really bad spot, at least to do their job um, to the best of their ability. Because everything culminates in that last couple of months of the season, right? Obviously... November is huge, high-pressure games where they're working crazy hours to make sure their team has any type of edge. They're hosting kids on weekends, on visits. They're doing tons of stuff during the back end of the season. And then we get to December, and they have a chance to, at least they should, have a chance to breathe for a second. Uh, if you you know didn't make a bowl game, uh, you should be able to uh, have a second to 
figure out what the next step is for your team. There are a lot of teams going through transition, and it's insane that a guy that has just finished the season, has just finished the incredible grind that this 12 or 13 games uh, is through September to November, that then they have to go through what is the most grueling month in all of the sport. Um, I think if you ask pretty much any coach out there, they would tell you they much prefer September and October to December uh, when it comes to coaching this sport because at the end of the day, at least in September, October, when they're doing recruiting and all of this different type of stuff, they get to coach football a lot of the times. And in December, that's a little bit fewer and further between. And I think it's been a really frustrating thing for coaches. So the NFL has looked like a very viable option for the future of their career. And obviously, going up to the NFL is never a bad idea. Obviously, it's the highest level of football, and there are plenty of coaches that just want to be NFL coaches. So um, it's not to say that all of these guys were definitely going to stay in college football if they, you know, if this structure and scheduling was changed. But there are tons of guys that would have uh, at least been a part of the future of this sport in a lot of ways, Brian McClendon being one of them. I think he would have been a huge, uh, Ryan Grubb, another one. All of these guys that are uber talented football coaches and have a chance to be head coaches in college football in the future and be kind of the next generation of great coaches are leaving because it's kind of unsustainable to be uh, any type of coach in college football at the moment, especially a higher level, whether that's Jeff Halfley as a head coach or Ryan Grubb as an OC or Liam Cohen as an OC. There's a lot on these guys' shoulders, um, especially around this time of year. So when those uh, job offers from the Seahawks or from the Buccaneers or from the Packers start rolling in, it's hard to say no. Uh, with all of this stuff happening around you, working pretty much 16-hour days no matter what, uh, probably more than that, to be totally honest with you, um, it's just it, it's it's an unfair thing to expect these coaches to pull off. And obviously they're in a very advantageous position that a lot of us would trade uh, with them immediately. But the reality is, I don't think a lot of us understand what that reality actually is. Um, they go into work way too early. They uh, leave work way too late. They spend way too little time with their family. And it's something that just has to be fixed at least the best it can. Obviously, when you coach elite level football, if you want to be elite in this sport, especially in today's world of fundraising and transfer portal and everything else, you're going to have to work a lot. There's no two ways about that. Um, every coach would tell you that. But every coach would also tell you there are ways to create a better environment for them to do their job effectively. I think one of the biggest ones would be just having one signing day in February, make that the main event again instead of having two signing days and creating this absolute gold rush, essentially, in December and late November that um, takes a lot away from the actual football being played. And it goes back to a lot of people devaluing what bowl games mean uh, to a lot of people, and it creates problems when you look at uh, not only the bowl game, you know, marketability and viewership and all of that type of stuff but also bull games are a lot of what make this sport incredible right uh, there are different things that i know a lot of people this past year loved the pop uh, the pop tart bowl so did i it was incredible and i think that's part of what makes all of this incredible all this sport just awesome it, there's so many different sides of it there's so many different layers to it and we're slowly kind of losing those layers because of all of the different stuff that it, that has been introduced. And it goes back to a lot of teams wanting to leave their conference. It's um, slowly stripping away certain parts of this sport that um, make it unique and make it uh, specific and make, make me love it in a lot of ways. So um, obviously not the greatest thing when you're losing names like Ryan Grubb, like Liam Cohen. Um, like Jeff Halfley, but also um, there are tons of people, and this goes back to the conference thing, there are tons of people that are finding their way to the SEC or the Big Ten 
because it's the steady ship, right? Uh, there are tons of P uh, conferences out there that don't really know what their future holds. Um, and the main example of this recently in a coach leaving for a position that they used to not leave for is uh, Sean Elliott, the head coach of Georgia State, leaving to be the tight end coach and run game coordinator at South Carolina. Now, um, there is some uh, extenuating circumstances here. It is uh, apparently his family has been living in Columbia um, for the past several years, and he would like to spend more time with them. Obviously cannot knock a man for that. There is no, uh, no issue with that by any means, of course, but it is something to watch, you know, that it, this is not something that used to happen, a, a head coach of a G5 program leaving to be a position coach or run game coordinator at a bigger uh, conference. And a, another example of this would be Maurice Lindquist leaving the head coaching job at Buffalo to be the DB coach and co-defensive coordinator, which definitely plays a part in all of this at Alabama. But it's a it's a differing um, landscape more and more, and I think uh, coaches are taking note of that. Uh, the coaches in the Sun Belt, in the MAC, in um, Conference USA, wherever it is, are slowly realizing they have very little control over what the future looks like for not only them but for um, their program, for uh, their kids, for a, a, a lot of different aspects in their life, and they say. They look around and see a sinking ship and see the SEC and the Big Ten, you know, continuing to rise in all of this and say, why not, you know, take a lower job in terms of title, in terms of, um, you know, uh, decision making, but be on a steady ship, um, be on a ship that I can slowly work my way up the ranks, possibly. If if you're a good coach, you're going to find a way to get a bigger job and a bigger job and a bigger job, right? So um, all these guys, you know, Maurice Lindquist, Sean Elliott, both those guys, very talented uh, coaches, and they both had head coaching jobs. So it's it's interesting to see them give up that position to just be in a place of stability and um, at least know that, you know, when you come to work in 2025 or 2026, there's still going to be a conference there. Uh, there's still going to be uh, teams to play. There's still going to be, um, you know, people watching. So uh, it is not what I want for the sport. It's not what a lot of people want for the sport. But it's kind of the reality at this point. Um, it, it takes away a lot of the tiering of this sport because – Obviously, there is a big gap between the SEC and the Big Ten and everyone else. Um, there is a big gap between even the Big 12 and the ACC and the Sun Belt and the MAC and all of that. And I fully understand that. You know, the level of play at the MAC level is not the same as the SEC, and there's no two ways about that. But watching the MAC on Tuesday and seeing really good players uh, come across your screen is part of what makes the sport great. Seeing really good coaches make their way from the MAC level, from the NAIA level, um, up to a Power 5 job is part of what makes the sport great. And it could be something that doesn't necessarily fully go away, but we could see coaches leaving those levels even sooner and uh, becoming position coaches at these bigger uh, places like Sean Elliott did and slowly work their way up the ranks because they're plenty talented coaches. Why not be in a stable situation where you can, you know, get a job within that conference instead of fighting tooth and nail just to kind of stay alive in your own. So um, there is a lot of worry, obviously, in the coaching area and in college football today. You know, uh, NIL and the transfer portal have created a ton of worry around college football fans, but I tend to believe all of this will be worked out. Now, I don't know how soon that'll be. I don't know necessarily how great the final result will be. I, I, I think it'll be two big conferences in a lot of ways. It will be the SEC and the Big Ten kind of gobbling up the whole sport in some ways, but I do think at some point there will be people that come along that actually 
have the sport's best interests at heart and, you know, care about the, you know, sanctity of what makes the sport special, which in some ways is tradition and in some ways is the regionality of this sport and keeping some things in conferences the same, you know, uh, leaving money out of it, which is a problem, you know, in the sports world in general. And, you know, seeing it from a fan's perspective that doesn't get a cut of these checks by any means. So um, there's there's tons to still happen uh, around college football. There's ton, uh, tons that will happen, you know, in the next couple of weeks uh, with regard to all of this. But I tend to believe there are people out there that see what's happening and will take over at some point. And um, it'll be interesting to see who those people are uh, and what their ideas are. But... Um, I do think there are enough people out there that see the problems that are happening in college football and want to fix them. So, um, I'm interested to see what happens with that. Um, but we're going to stop talking about the, the morbid parts of this sport real quick. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to break down the best coaching hires of this, uh, cycle in college football. Definitely a couple of guys that really, really stand out. So, uh, stick with us and we will be right back. <laughs> 